Hello, Stats Cats. Welcome to another video. I just want to first of all give a shout out to everybody that has fought their way through this semester. It's been unique, to say the least. I never in my wildest dreams thought that this is how I would be teaching through a series of videos. So for those of you that are sending me questions, for those of you that are attending the lectures, for those of you that are doing your homework, thank you. And I hope that you have found this process to be, if not entertaining, at least an opportunity for, for growth. And I can't wait for the day when we can all go out and celebrate again and when we can actually meet in person i look i look forward to that hopefully we can see each other on campus or today what i would like to do is go through some of the questions that have been sent to me uh, over the past couple of days regarding confidence intervals and hypothesis testing on the third quiz, which you'll be writing this week or the next one, depending on what section you're in, you're going to be asked to solve problems that require a full solution. In other words, it's not just the answer that you input on Pearson. It's going to be mandatory this time to actually submit written work. Now that written work could be a, an Excel spreadsheet or it could be written down on a piece of paper and then you scan it using a PDF application such as Office Lens or Adobe Scan. Cam Scanner is another good one. Tiny Scanner. There's lots of apps that you have access to. Office Lens would be one that comes with your, you know, your subscription to Office 360, so that's a good one as well. But I don't want to get pictures with your cell phone that you just copy and paste into a Word document. I want it to be a PDF scan. What I don't like about this question, first of all, is that they don't really give you any background. Like, we don't really know what they're talking about. It's like they've already done part of the question, and they're asking us to kind of finish it. So they say a test statistic. So they're they're telling us that they're using a Z score. All right. And again, this is the calculation that you know normally you would do, right? Based off of the sample data. And they say we're testing a claim that P equals 44 over 7. So again, this is kind of confusing. So let's let's try and reverse engineer what they're asking. So they say we have a test score of Z equals negative 1.1. So this is interesting, first of all, because we haven't really seen negative Z scores in the other videos that I've shown you. So that's, that's good. We can kind of see what that's all about. And what other piece of information we know, they say P equals Four over seven. So basically saying the population is four out of seven. And we're not really used to dealing with fractions here, so let's just kind of you know, and all the other questions. Let's just use our calculator here. I get 0 0.5714. Let's say that's enough for now. So they're saying the population proportion is, you know, 57%, approximately, right? Again, they're not really telling us much. They're just saying that it's 57%. Or is it? Right? They're saying test the claim. Right? 
uh, we, we have a test score of here uh, and test the claim that P equals four over seven. And, you know, step two normally is setting up the hypothesis test. And essentially they say test the claim that it is 0.5714. The null hypothesis, if you recall from my previous videos, is always something equals something. Right, so the this that would be that. The null hypothesis is that the population is a 57%, you know, approval rate of Justin Trudeau's job during the Serb pandemic or four out of seven vaccines work. Now, the reason this question, again, the reason I don't really like it is because it doesn't say test the claim whether it's lower or higher, right? If you look at your Z score here, negative 1.1, it means that the the sample is lower than this, right? So you do some sort of surveying and you find that your value is lower than negative one, or it's lower than 57. That's what this implies. I'll go back to that in a second, but they don't say that. They don't say test the claim that it's decreased. They just say test the claim that it is. And so you're, because of that, Again, I would probably in this case, if it was me doing the research and in a, in a real world scenario, when you're collecting data, you want to show if something has decreased or increased, which means you'd be doing a, a, a one tail test. Right, if I said test the claim that the population is less than four out of seven, then that would be a one tail uh, test. But because they say just test the claim that it is, this tells you that you're doing a two tail test. And this is why I wanted to take the opportunity to bring this up because in my previous videos on hypothesis testing, it was always one tail. And the reason I choose to do those problems with one tail is because again, that's what's gonna happen, right? You're gonna conduct an experiment and then something is either gonna be above or below uh, the, the accepted value or the status quo. Right, you do some research and you find out that global warming is happening, right? The temperature is increasing. All right. So a Z score of negative 1.1 means that you're, you know, your actual P hat value is below this value here. And the question is, is it significantly enough far away? In other words, we have to establish some sort of critical zone, right? We don't know where that is yet, but we have to figure out if this distance of 1.1 of standard deviations away is enough. Right, we know this is 1.1. But the question is, is, is it in the rejection zone or not? So let's go back to the question. So use a significance of 0.1. Okay, so a significance of 0.1. What's that going to be? Well, again, it's a two tailed test. And Let's just bring up another one of these here for now. And with a two tailed test. So if this is the total amount of uncertainty, a two tailed test means we have to divide it by half. And so half of the values are going to be there. Right, this would be the rejection zone on the low side. This is the rejection zone on the high side. And so we have to figure out what is this critical score here? To, again, to see if this value is, is in here or not. Right, you can reject the null hypothesis if it's in this area, because again, it's going to be significantly far away that it's not going to be a false positive. So let's use the Z score chart they give us. 
So I need to find 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Oh, there we go. It's nice. They even give us a little asterisk on this one, which is generous. So negative 1.645. That's your critical score. So the answer is no, it's not. Right, the rejection zone is over here. We're going to use absolute values when comparing these scores. So the test score of 1.1 is less than the critical score of 1.645. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And again, what I'm really looking for here is for you to put it into non-technical terms. Again, that's going to be your job. You know, you're an engineer, but you're going to be working with people that are not engineers. And so you're going to have to say something like, well, I guess we don't really know the question here. That's another problem I don't like about this thing. They don't really give any background. I guess they, they want a negative value. Point six, two decimal places, so six, five. And then one point. Because again, it's two tail, so you can put them both. Uh, we fail to reject. Good. So again, as you're doing these questions, if you you know this is question eight dot one dot two four or whatever from the homework, but if you want to you know practice more of these, just go to similar question, and then you get a. Similar question. So here again, I just want to take a couple of minutes, even though this is a similar question, I would say. The main difference here is going to be that. This is a one tail test. Because it says test the claim that P is less than 0 0.59. So the way you would set that up. In this case, they're giving you the alternative hypothesis, right? They say, you know, test the claim that it is less than 0 0.59. So that me again, the alt, the, the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis always has an equal sign. And this is what you would call a one tail because we're testing that it goes below. So you don't divide your alpha uh, value in half here at all. You're just, all the alpha is going to be below. So again, just to kind of summarize the difference between one tail and two tail. When you're doing a two tail test. It implies that. We are just looking for a change, not in any direction in particular. You are testing. for a change in the status quo. In other words, it's always going to be your mean or your proportion does not equal some value. And in this case, Let's use does not equal. I don't know. Just let's call it a. That's your alternative hypothesis. Is divided in half. Right, there's two rejection zones. So your critical score is, is different than if it was a one tail, right? In a one tail test,
So this, again, this is the decision you have to make based on the information they give you. In a one tail test, and again, this is what I think is the more important one, the one that you would use when you're trying to prove if something has gone up or if something has gone down. You are testing for a decrease or an increase. In your population parameter, so either your your average or your proportion has increased or decreased. And in that case, all of your uncertainty is in one area. All of your alpha is below. Or all of your alpha is above. Now, when you're doing your lab, number four, and it says test whether or not the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. If your value that you get is above that, then you can do a one tail test to show that it is actually above 9.8 where you are, or you can do a one tail test to show that's below if you get a value less than, or you could do a two tail test if you want. It just depends on how you set it up. I don't really care which one, because I don't know what your value is going to be, right? If you're getting the acceleration due to gravity is now 10.2. And it might be, right? The, the acceleration due to gravity does change depending on where you are. Maybe not that much, but that's part of the whole experiment that we're doing. Is maybe there's some other factor, like your pendulum is not ideal. But that's besides the point. The point I'm trying to make here is that if you want to do a two tail test, that's fine. If you want to do a one tail test, that's fine. Just make sure you do the setup right and your graph is correct and you'll you'll get the marks. Find the critical value. If you have an 81% confidence interval, again, make the draw it out it makes it a lot easier right so the middle 80 one percent in this case tells you that your your tails have a combined nine percent or sorry 19 percent of results so alpha over two, again, because it's divided, would be uh, 9.5. But again, we have to use decimals in order to read our chart. Let's use Excel for this one, just because I don't have the chart handy. There we go. The probability, right, okay, there we go. So 0 0.095, which is 9.5%. The average is zero. And the standard deviation one. Negative one point, negative 1.31. 1 So I don't know again if they want a positive or negative. Let's just go positive, see what happens. Good. On your quiz, on your next quiz or on your on your on your final exam, I really can't mention this enough. That you're not going to be inputting answers like this. You're going to be giving me this. Right? This is what you submit. You don't put your answer into Pearson anymore. It's not going to have an input space. Right? It's just going to say it's it's just going to have this part. And here's this is going to be blank. Or it's going to say submit your answer on a piece of paper or Excel. So don't worry too much about that anymore. I mean, you obviously to check your answers here, it's it's great. But you know, make sure that you're comfortable submitting something like this.
that way I can give you, you know, this would be like a three mark question. I give you one mark here, one mark here, one mark here. So you have to wait a while. 